Once again, good morning. It's Alexander Fenter speaking, and this is my second part of my little homily on John chapter 20, verse 19 to 22. And it's the, it's the post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to all of his apostles, his disciples, probably more than the 12 gathered in their room the first evening, that Sunday night, in the dark, with candles in their lockdown. And then Jesus comes into their lockdown, into their fear of being arrested by the authorities, into their uncertainty and confusion as to the rumors of his body being missing. Jesus comes. And wherever you are in uncertainty, in lockdown, in fear, struggling, whatever it may be, Jesus comes to you through the locked door, through the walls, and he reveals himself to you by saying, here are my hands, here are the marks of pain and suffering, and uh, I have suffered for you, I suffer with you, I'm fully aware, and I'm here to transform what's going on within you and around you. And Jesus, by revealing himself to them, identifying himself, encountering them, they are overjoyed when they realize it is Jesus. When you really meet Jesus through the breaking of the bread, the drinking of the wine, and I encourage you to practice that at home, read scripture reading, prayer, meditation, listening to worship songs. In many of our spiritual practices, Jesus comes to us and transforms us so that we are filled with his joy and peace and we receive shalom, God's order. God's wholeness, God's peace, God's well-being upon us that drives out the fear and the uncertainty. So just picking up the story from where I left off on Sunday morning, it says, once again, Jesus then pronounces shalom upon them. Peace be upon you. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they will be forgiven. And if you do not forgive them of their sins, they will not be forgiven. And that's a very interesting text. But just to finish off and say this, that Jesus in our homes, in our lockdown, in our uncertainty, meets us and encounters us all with a view to open everything up and take us out. To reach others because Christianity is not about Jesus and me essentially. Jesus loves me and comes to me and like Mary that Sunday morning when she, when she realized it was Jesus she fell down and clung to him and he, and he said don't cling to me. Don't have me for yourself and hold me. Keep me for yourself. Go and tell your brothers I am risen. And so Jesus comes into that lockdown, into their lives, into their hearts to turn them outward, to send them out, just as he was sent. So he says, may God's peace, order, and well-being come upon you. And as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. So here is the commission to go out and to be witnesses and to be catalysts of change, to be light in the world, to bring hope, to bring healing, to basically go do what Jesus did the way he did it. We call ourselves followers of Jesus. And these, these um, folk were followers of Jesus. And basically, they um, are being sent the way the Father sent the Son. So now the Son is sending them out from their lockdown to reach out to others and to go and gossip the gospel. There is a lot of darkness a lot of negativity, a lot of pain, a lot of heaviness and depression. This lockdown and uh, pandemic, sadly, tragically, has created a pressure cooker in the home of intense relationships. And uh, in many of our townships and informal settlements, probably in the majority the population of our nation, you cannot keep the bodily distance and live locked down the way the middle class and, and upper class do. And so there's an intensity of engagement and relationship. 
and uh, incidents of domestic abuse have been reported with a dramatic, dramatic increase. So there's all sorts of mental health issues, domestic violence issues, and the pressure cooker of intense relationship in lockdown. And Jesus comes into that to bring order and peace, but to send us out to reach out to others who are in lockdown and tell them the good news, the King has risen. He defeats coronavirus. He defeats fear. He defeats uncertainty and depression. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And as he does this commission to go out, open up, go out and reach others. And of course, we need to be wise with that. We need to honor the government and what they are saying and doing. And I think that... Thank God for Saul Ramaphosa and the team uh, around him of experts that are helping to lead, to give leadership to our nation. It's so vastly different to our previous president. Thank God for this new dispensation that we're in. But just to say we must honor their rec requ requirements and recommendations and we must respect the, the social distancing and we can reach out as we have been doing under lockdown through all the social media available to us, through all the technology available to us, WhatsApp, Zoom conferences, Skype, these video things. We're going to be doing church online like this for a good while because uh, I don't think we're going to be able to gather normally as church, it seems to me, for a good, a good while. So it, it, it behoves us to look outwards and pray how can God use me to reach out to others all around me through whatever means available to me within the safety of keeping a physical and bodily distance and be Jesus to them? As the Father has sent me, now I am sending you out of your fear, your uncertainty. When you have a purpose to give your life away to someone else, to a higher cause beyond yourself, to the cause of King Jesus, to incarnate his love and compassion, his resurrection life and power, and reach out to others. It gives you a reason for living. It lifts your eyes beyond your own self, internal um, issues of inner struggle, and puts your eyes on other people in need to exercise God's compassion and mercy and become his instrument. And with that, it says Jesus breathed on them. He did an unusual thing. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And John is using the exact Greek words that were used in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. When God created Adam out of the ground, then it says God breathed into Adam the breath of life and he became a, a living being. It's the exact same Greek word with the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament called the Septuagint. Jesus is the new Adam. The last Adam is breathing into new Adams and new Eves where the early church is literally being born again with the life and the power of the resurrection. And these new born again Adam and Eves <laughs> are to be sent out to take the new garden of creation and re-shalom the earth, bring the new creation in the midst of this old broken creation. And there is such brokenness. The pandemic is as a result of broken creation because of the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. We brought through sin, death entered into creation and chaos and pandemics are all part of the package of fallen creation. But the resurrection of Jesus is the new creation that has literally already begun in the midst of old broken creation. And we become the new Adams and the new Eves who are born again, freshly breathed in, fresh from the resurrection with the spirit of life, God's, God's eternal life, God's kind of quality of life, which is forever. And we go out and re-shalom the earth. And then he, he, he further um, emphasizes the mandate, go out, reach people and forgive them. Gossip the good news of the resurrection of the new creation that Jesus is king, not Corona. Corona is not king. Jesus is king. And forgive people their sins. Heal their sicknesses. So this text may be difficult, 
but basically it means those whom God is forgiving and we sense and identify God is working with them. When we speak it, it actually takes place. So Jesus forgave sins. He healed sicknesses. He bound up the brokenhearted. He set prisoners free from spiritual darkness. He did the whole ministry of the kingdom, bringing holistic shalom, God's order and well-being by breaking chaos, defeating darkness and depression in people's lives. So my encouragement to you is consider this week to do some things differently. Who can you phone? Who can you reach out to? Who can you go and buy food for and go drop it off at their door? Who can you offer to get medicines for? The elderly, the vulnerable, the sick people among us who need special care and awareness. How can you become God's instrument filled with his Holy Spirit? Let the Holy Spirit show you to go as Jesus went, as Jesus was sent and be Jesus to people and bring the kingdom of Shalom. Go into their lockdown, into their darkness, into their fear as Jesus has come into ours, into yours and bring Jesus to them that they may be overwhelmed with joy when they recognize and see Jesus has come to them in and through you. Let me pray for you. Lord, I bless my brothers and my sisters in Newton Park Methodist Church in Port Elizabeth and all those who will watch this video. I bless them with your Holy Spirit. I bless them with a renewal of the creation mandate to go and multiply and fill the earth with God's resurrection shalom. Jesus breathes on you. You breathe in and receive the spirit of resurrection and let the Holy Spirit show you whom you can reach out to in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. Thank you.